Hello everyone and welcome back to AWS reInvent here in wonderful Las Vegas, Nevada. We're theCUBE, I am Savannah Peterson, joined with my co-host Dave Vellante. Day four, you look great. Your voice has come back somehow. Yeah, a little bit. I don't know how. I, I took it off, took last night off. You guys I know were out partying all night, but you look great too. I don't know what you're talking too. about. Yeah. <laughs> Well, you were celebrating John's birthday, John yeah. Furrier's birthday today. Yes, happy birthday, John. He's on, a way, he's on his way to England yeah. uh, to, at his nephew's uh, wedding. Awesome family, and uh, so good luck, John. I hope you feel better, he's got a little cold. But. I know, and good luck to the Neelywoods. I love this. Yeah. I, I know we're both really excited for our next guest, so I'm going to bring her out. Most Lena definitely. Smart from MongoDB, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. How's the show going for you? Good. It's been a long week, <laughs> and I just not much voice left. So <laughs> we'll be gentle. I'll on give you. you what's left. Of it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll take that. Okay. <laughs> you had a fireside chat at the show. I did. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Uh, so we were talking about the rise of the developer data platform mm -hmm. uh, in this massive theater. I thought it would be like an intimate, you know, fireside chat. I keep believing them when they say to me, "Come and do these talks. It'll be intimate." <laughs> And you turn up and there's a stage in a theater and it's like, oh my God. Um, but it was really interesting, it was well attended, got some really good questions at the end as well, lots of follow up, which was interesting. And it was really just about you know, how, we, how we've brought together this de uh, developer platform that's got our, our integrated services. Uh, it's just what developers want. It, it gives them time to innovate and disrupt rather than worry about the minutia of management. Do the cool stuff. Exactly. Yeah, so you know, Lena, it's funny that she's saying that, well, wow, the lights came on and it was this big thing. When, when we were at Reinforce, Lena <laughs> was on stage and it was so funny, <laughs> Lena, you were self-deprecating, like <laughs> making jokes about the, the audience. Yeah, yeah, it was, yeah, it was yeah. hilarious. Yeah. And so, but it was really endearing to the audience and so we it were was like, terrifying. You, got, you, got huge, <laughs> you got huge props for that, I'll it was tell you. absolutely yeah. terrifying. Because <laughs> they told me I wouldn't see anyone because we did the rehearsal the day before and they were like, it's just going to be Sometimes lights. Sometimes it just looks like blackness out yeah, there. Yeah, it yeah. wasn't. They <laughs> lied. I could see eyeballs. It was terrifying. <laughs> Would you rather know that going in though or is it better to be, is ignorance bliss in that ignorance moment? Ignorance is bliss. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good call, Savannah, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just go. The older I get, the more I'm just, I'm on the ignorance is bliss train. <laughs> I, I just, I don't need to know anything that's going to exactly. hurt my soul. One of the things that you mentioned, and this has actually been a really uh, com uh, uh, frequent theme here on the show this week, is you said that this has been a transformative year for developers. Yeah. What did you mean by that? So I think developers are starting to come to the fore, if you like. Before, and I'm not in any way being deprecate, uh, deprecating about uh, developers because I love them. Um, <laughs> I, I think live, everyone here does. I was yeah. married to one, I live with one now. It's like <laughs> they follow me everywhere. Um, <laughs> they don't. But. I think the, t this is my opinion obviously, but I think that we're seeing uh, more and more the value that developers bring to the table. They're not just code geeks anymore. They're not just code monkeys, you know, churning out lines and lines of code. Some of the most interesting discussions I've had this week have been with developers. And that's why I'm so pleased that our developer data platform is going to give these folks back time so that they can go and innovate and do super interesting things and do the next big thing. Um, and it was interesting, I was talking to, to Mary, our, our comms person earlier, and she had said that uh, Dave, I guess my, bo my boss, was on your show Yeah, yesterday. he was over here last night. Yeah, <laughs> and he was saying that like two thirds of the companies that had been mentioned so far um, within the whole you know, gamut of this uh, conference use MongoDB. And so take that, extrapolate that of all wow. the developers who are there. I know it's that's massive. That's awesome. I know, I Congrats heard that stat. That. I was like, did like, I hear that right? I know. Yeah, I, yeah, I just massive. had that moment. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know she just told me, I'm like, really? That's, that's, that's so cool. Because the first thing I thought of was then, oh my God, how many developers are we reaching then? Because they're the ones. Right. I mean, it's kind of interesting. So my job Talk is kind of. scale. Yeah, my job is kind of grown from over the years being the like security geek in the back room that nobody talks to, to you know avoiding me in the lift, uh, to I've got a seat at the table now, we meet with the board, and I think that I can see that that's where you know the developer mindset is moving towards, it's like, give us the right tools and we'll change your world. And, and let the human capital go back to doing the fun stuff and not yeah. just the maintenance stuff. 
And I'm, but then you say that, you can't have everything automated. I get that automation is also the buzzword of the week. Yeah. And I get that, trust me. Someone has to write the code to do the automation. Right. So, yeah. so yeah, definitely give these people back time so that they can work on ML, AI, choose your buzzword. Um, you know, by, by giving people things like queryable encryption, for example, yeah. you're going to free up a whole bunch of headspace. They don't have to worry about their data being, you know, harvested from memory or harvested while at rest or in motion. And it's like, okay, I don't have to worry about that now. Let me go do something fun. How about the role of the, de the developer as it relates to SecOps? Right, they're being asked to do a lot. You and I talked about this at Reinforce. You seem to have a pretty good handle on it. Like a lot of companies I think are struggling with it. I mean, the other thing you said to me is, you know, you don't have a lack of talent at Mongo. Right. Because you know, you're Mongo. Right. But a lot of companies do. But, yeah. but a lot of the, the developers, you know, we were just talking about this earlier with Capgemini, they're, the developer metrics might, or the application development team's metrics might not be aligned with the CISO's yeah. metrics. How, what are you seeing there? What, how do you deal with it within Mongo? What do you advise your customers? So in terms of internal, um, I work very closely with our development groups. I work with uh, Tara Hernandez, who's our, our new VP of uh, developer productivity. And she and her team are very much interested in making developers more productive, that's her job. And so we get together because sometimes security can definitely be seen as a blocker. Uh, you know, I, I, funnily enough, I actually had a Slack that I had to respond to three seconds before I come on here, and it was like, help, we need, we need some help getting this application through procurement because blah, blah, blah. And it's, it's weird the kind of change, the shift in mindset, whereas before they might have gone to procurement or HR or someone to ask for this, now they're coming to the CISO. Because they know if I say yes, <laughs> it'll go through. Um, talking about social engineering. Turn out, exactly. <laughs> yeah. But turn it, it, turn it around though, and if I say no, you know, I don't like to say no, I prefer to be the CISO that says yes, but. And so that's what we've done. We've definitely got that culture of ask, we'll tell you the risks, and then you can go away and be innovative and, and do what you need to do. And we, d we basically do the same with our customers. Here's what you can do. Our application is secured out the box. Here's how we can help you make it even more you know, streamlined or bespoke to what you need. So mobile was a big inflection point. You know, I don't know, it seems like forever ago. 2007. 2007, yeah, iPhone came out in 2007. Do you remember right? your first iPhone? Yeah. Yeah, see? Yeah, it was pretty awesome okay. actually. I do too. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I was on the train to Boston, going up to see some friends at um, MIT on the consortium that I work with, and I had, it was a wee one, remember, it was a wee yeah, tiny, yeah, yeah. but you thought size. it was massive. Oh, it felt. It felt big. And I remember I was sitting on the train to, to Boston, it was like the Acela, and there was these people, these two women sitting beside me, and they were all like glam like you, and <laughs> unlike me. <laughs> and, uh, That's awesome. Yeah. And, and they, um, and you could see them like nudging each other, and I'm being like, I'm just sitting like this, like You're please look yeah. at my phone. Come on, just look at it and ask me about it. And eventually, I'm like, <laughs> You're baiting nons them. nonchalantly <laughs> laid it on the table, and you know, I'm like, and they're like, is that an iPhone? I'm like, yeah, you want to see it? <laughs> <laughs> I thought you'd never ask. And I know, yeah. and I really like, played with it, and I showed them all the cool stuff, and they're like, oh, we're going to buy iPhones. And so I should have probably worked for Apple. I, would, I was going to say, where was your referral kickback on that? I know. It was a little like days. a little like Tesla, right? Yeah. When you first you know, when you first saw Tesla, the, the, I, I, it was Ray Wong. You know, Ray from It really Constellation. was a moment, and He's going like, from the BlackBerry keyboard. Want to see my car? <laughs> I'm like, oh yeah. Uh, sure. Well, what's the big deal? It's yeah. Tesla. Then you like, see it, oh, and you're right. like, ooh. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> yeah, it, that really was such a such a pivotal moment. Anyway, so we lost the track. 2007. Yeah, what were we talking about? 2007 <laughs> mobile. <laughs> mobile. Right, big inflection it, point it, is yes. where you got us here. Board. Yeah, thank yeah. you. Yes. I got you. Bring dude. us back. I got you. My mind needs help right now. Day four. Okay, so we're all getting through day four. I'm so I'm so Socially engineering you to end this so I can go to bed and die quietly. <laughs> That's what me and Mary are we're counting down the minutes. Oh, Lady, you're That's you're so breaking good. into my heart right now. I love it. I'm, I'm with you, sis. I'm with you. I so I don't know where I, I really where, where, where I was going with this, but okay, there's, there's got to be a, another inflection point. Three coming. things happened. Right, okay, yeah, tell us what, what happened. Uh, but no, I'm, so, okay, tell us that. But then, AWS, yeah, cloud, okay, 2006, 2006, 2007, right? 
2007 iPhone, the world blew up, so you've already, you've already got this platform ready to take all this data. Right. You've got this little slab of gorgeousness called the iPhone ready to give you all that data. And then MongoDB pops up, it's like woohoo. But what we could offer was, I mean, back then was awesome, but it was, we knew that we would have to iterate and grow and grow and grow. So that was kind of the three things that came together in 2007. Yeah, and then cloud came in big time, and now you've got this platform. So what's the next inflection point, do you think? Oh, good question, I hope you wouldn't ask me that. I mean, is it edge? <laughs> is it IOT? Is, it, is, it, is there another disruptor out there? I think is it's it, going to be artificial intelligence. Is it AI? Yeah. I mean, I don't know enough about it to talk about it to any level, so don't ask me any questions. This on is like it. one of those ignorance is bliss moments. It yeah. feels right. Well, yeah. does yeah. it scare you from a security perspective? Or? Good question, Dave. Yeah. It scares me more from a humanity standpoint. <laughs> like, more than social scared you? Because yeah. social was so benign when it started. Oh, it was. You're like, oh. I, I remember it was like I, a yearbook. I it was wasn't on, a, yeah. I was on the Acela, and and, and we were shout out was, to Amtrak. They, there. They, I was with. A, we were starting uh, basically a, 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 a Wikibon. It was mm -hmm. an open source yeah, yeah. kind of you know, technology community, and we saw these. And we were like enamored of Facebook. And there were oh. these two young kids on the train, and we were at, we were picking their brain. Do you like Facebook? I love Facebook. Right? Oh, Facebook's unbelievable. Now kids today, ah, I hate Facebook. Yeah. All right. Uh, right. So, but social. At the beginning, it was kind of, like I say, benign, and now everybody's like. We didn't know what we were know. getting into. Right, I know. exactly. Can you imagine if you could have seen into the future 20 years ago? Well, first of all, we'd have all bought Facebook and Apple stock. Right. <laughs> and Tesla stock, but yeah. apart from that, yeah. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, apart from that. Okay, so what about quantum? Does that scare you at all? Um, I think the only thing that scares me about quantum is we have all this security in place today, and I'm not an expert in quantum, but we have all this security in place that's securing what we have today. And my worry is in 10 years, is it still going to be secure? Because we're still going to be using that data in some way, shape or form. And my question is to the quantum geniuses out there, what do we do in 10 years like to retrofit stuff? Like a Y2K moment? Kind of, although I think it, Y2K is coming in 2038, isn't it, when the Linux date? Flips. I'll be off the grid by then. I'll be living in Scotland. Somebody else's problem. Somebody else's <laughs> problem. I'll be with the sheep in Glasgow and Scotland. Y2K was a boondoggle for tech. What a right? farce. I mean, yeah, that I, whole, worked, that whole I thing. worked in the power industry in Y2K. That was a nightmare. Oh, I bet. Oh, my God. Yeah, because we just assumed that the world was going to stop and there'd be no power. And we had nuclear power plants, and it's like, holy moly. Yeah. <laughs> More than moly. <laughs> I was going to say you did a good job holding that I did. other <laughs> word in. I did. Yes. In case my mum hears this, I if I a drop an F bomb. I, I grew up uh, near Diablo Canyon in, in California. Oh, so okay. we were, I mean, we were legitimately worried that that exactly yep. was going to happen and what yep. about the waste and, and yeah, it was it was chaos. Oh, yeah. We've covered a lot. Well, what does worry you? Minutes. Like, is it yeah. culture? Is it. Why are you trying to freak her out? I don't know. No, because it's a CISO. <laughs> to my bed. <laughs> trying to get inside the CISO. You don't think I have enough to worry I know, about? She wants to get the I love having you know, Maybe it's spiders. Or like oh, <laughs> I like spiders. Well, spiders are okay. I don't like bridges. That's my biggest fear. Bridges, oh, seriously. And I had to drive over the Tappan Zee Bridge, which is one of oh, the yeah. longest, for 17 years, every day, twice. The last time I drove over it, I was crying my heart out, happy oh, as yeah. anything. Stay I've out never, of Oakland. never driven over yeah. it since. <laughs> Stay out of where? Stay out of Oakland. I'm staying out of anywhere that's got lots of water, because it'll have bridges. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's Land a good thing we're here in the desert. Exactly. <laughs> <We're here. laughs> so what scares me? Bridges, there you go. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I love it. What, but, uh, well, well, wait a minute. So if I'm bridging technology, <laughs> oh, is that God, scary? That was naff. Is that really bad? <laughs> <laughs> that was really bad. Wow. Wow. There's a lot of seams in those it's bridges. It's lit on the cube day four. We are, we are all struggling. Uh, I'm curious because I've seen, I've seen your team is all over the place here on the show floor. Your booth has been packed the whole time. Yes. The fingerprint. Talk oh, to me about your shirt. So this, this was designed by my team in-house. It is the most wanted swag in the company because only my security people wear it. Oh. So we make it like, yeah, uh, you could maybe have one <laughs> if this turns out well. I feel like, I feel like we're, we're on the right track. Yeah, okay. If it turns out well, me yeah, letting I you go. I just love it. It's so, it's just brilliant. I mean, it's the leaf, it's a fingerprint, it's, it's just brilliant. Mm. That's why I wanted to call it out. Yeah. It's, you, you know, you see a lot of shirts, a lot of swag shirts. Oh, yeah. Some are really 
unfortunately sad or they not are. funny or they're just trying too hard. And others, like with this one, I thought, oh, I bet that's it's clever. It's very cool. Yes, I we love saw it. a good one yesterday. Yeah? We fix shit, remember? Oh, yeah, yeah. That was oh, pretty yeah, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's I like when they're just fun. straightforward like yeah. that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But the only thing with this is when you stand in front of a green screen, you look as though you've got no tummy. A, a portal through your body. And so when we did our first... That's uh, a really good point, actually. Yeah, it's like the black hole to nothingness. Yeah. And I'm like, wow, well, that's my soul anyway. I was just going to say, but, yeah. <laughs> I don't want to see my soul like that. <laughs> but, <laughs> I don't want to know. But we'd, we had to do like a... Uh, it was just when the pandemic first started, so we had to do like our big presentation live announcement from home. And so they shipped us all this camera equipment for home, and thank God my partner knows how that works. So he set it all up. And then he had me test with a green screen, and he's like, you have no tummy. I'm like, what the hell are you talking about? He's like, come and see. It's like this, I don't know what it was. So I had to actually go upstairs and felt tip with a magic marker and make it black. Wow. So that was what I did for two hours on a Friday, yeah. <laughs> Couldn't think of another alternative, huh? Well, no, because I'm myopic when it comes to marketing, and I knew I had to keep the T-shirt on, and I just did that. Yeah. In hindsight, yes, I could have worn Maybe it have I Fix Shit T-shirt, yeah. but I don't think my boss would have been very happy. <laughs> I Secure Shit? Uh, there you go. There yeah. you go. <laughs> Over to you. I was going <laughs> to say, now you're all fired. I got, I got, I got acquainted. I don't know if I can say this, but I'm going to say it because we're here right now. I got acquainted with the Cube wearing a shirt that said "Unfuck Kubernetes" because it was a marketing <laughs> campaign that I was running for one of my clients at KubeCon last year. Yeah, so oh, my God. I, <laughs> oh yeah, I'll give you one of these if you get me one of these. I can. We can do a swap ski. We, we need a few edits on this film. <laughs> 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 Yeah, this is none. We're all falling of off the way. <laughs> okay. On that note, I'm going to bring us to our, our challenge that we discussed before we got uh, started on this really diverse discussion that we have had in the last 15 minutes. Yeah. We've covered everything from felt tip markers to nuclear power to plants. The darkness of my soul. <laughs> to the darkness of all of our souls. All of our souls, yes. Which, which is perhaps a little too accurate, especially at this stage in the conference. <laughs> You, you've obviously seen a lot, Lena, and, and you've been rocking it. I know John was in your suite uh, up here at, 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 the, at the Venetian. What's your 30-second hot take, most important story coming out of the show or for you all at Mongo this year? Uh, genuinely, it was when I learned that two-thirds of the customers that had been mentioned here are MongoDB customers, and that just exploded in my head. Because now I'm thinking of all the numbers and the metrics and how we can use that, and I just think it's amazing. So yeah, congratulations I, on that. Yeah, That's awesome. yeah. And it I makes it sense actually. Because so Mongo cool. is so easy to use. We were talking yeah. about 10 gen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 10 gen. Yeah. People, you know, but Mongo. We knew was you there. when. I feel like <laughs> that's our yeah, like. We do. Yeah. And, and so, and yeah. Mongo was just really easy to use, and people were like, ah, it doesn't scale. It's like, hey, it turns what? out it actually does scale. Turns out it scales <laughs> pretty well. <laughs> Well, Lena, without question, this is my favorite conversation oh, of the you. show so far. Thank Thanks. you so much for joining us. Thank you very much for having me. Great it's to always see you. a pleasure. Thanks, Lena. Thank you. And thank you all tuning in live for, for uh, tolerating wherever we take these Whatever conversations. That was. I bet you weren't ready for this one, folks. <laughs> We're at AWS reInvent in Las Vegas, Nevada with Dave Vellante. I'm Savannah Peterson. You're watching theCUBE, the leader for high tech coverage. <laughs>